In September 1940, Germany, Italy and Japan had signed the document known as the Tripartite Pact. Die Besprechung über die schwebenden politischen Probleme verlief im Geiste der herzlichen Freundschaft, die Deutschland und Japan verbindet. This pact between the three countries created the Axis Partnership, in which the nations were supposed to broadly cooperate together in a war and respect one another's territorial gains. Following the Japanese attack on the United States Pacific Fleet on the 7th of December 1941, Germany and Italy declared war on the United States, even though neither the Germans nor the Italians were obligated to do so under the terms of the Tripartite Pact. The navies of Japan, Germany and Italy had no common grand strategy, even though all elements of the Axis Partnership were fighting for the defeat of the Allied nations, with the exception of Japan, whose war was primarily with the United States, Great Britain and the British Empire and did not include the Soviet Union until 1945. Germany needed certain raw materials from Asia, but its supplies were cut off by Allied naval blockades. Merchant ships were easy targets for Allied warships and aircraft. In exchange, Japan wanted high-tech military equipment and plans from the Germans. The answer to both sides' needs was a system of underwater blockade runners, Submarines, codenamed the Yanagi Trade. It was first attempted in 1942, during a daring operation to move a huge Japanese submarine from the Far East to a U-boat base in German-occupied France. On the 4th of April 1942, the Imperial Japanese Navy submarine I-30 left Japan for the Indian Ocean. Completed at the Kure Naval Yard and commissioned on the 28th of February 1942, the submarine was considerably larger than any German U-boat of the period, at 350 feet in length and 2,584 tons displacement, with a range of 14,000 nautical miles at 16 knots. In fact, this class of submarine was so large that the Japanese were able to mount an aircraft catapult on board, with a watertight hangar located forward of the conning tower containing a Yokosuka E-14Y1 reconnaissance floatplane. The aircraft had been officially adopted for use on Japanese submarines towards the end of 1940, and had a maximum airspeed of 190 knots. Although they mostly flew their reconnaissance missions unarmed, they could be fitted with a 7.7mm machine gun operated by the rear observer. These aircraft were extremely useful to the Japanese submarine force, providing the boats with an effective reconnaissance screen over a greatly extended range. The I-30 was well armed, with six torpedo tubes located in the bow and 11 reloads in the bow compartment, as well as a 5.5-inch deck gun mounted aft of the conning tower. The submarine's crew numbered 110 men, including the pilot and rear gunner of the Glenn floatplane, as the aircraft was codenamed by the Allies. On the 27th of March, the German Kriegsmarine formally requested through diplomatic representations that the Imperial Japanese Navy should begin anti-convoy operations in the Indian Ocean. The Japanese agreed to the request, and on the 8th of April withdrew a submarine force, including the I-30, from their base at Kwajalein in the tropical Marshall Islands. The I-30 departed from Kure, Japan for Penang in Malaya on the 11th of April and was assigned to Captain Noburo Ishizaki's 8th submarine flotilla, which included five other submarines, as well as two submarine support ships. On the 22nd of April, the I-30 left Penang in company with one of those ships, the Aiko Kumaru, and headed for the coast of East Africa to reconnoitre possible targets for the Navy. After spending some time running up the east coast of Africa, including launching the Yokosuka floatplane carried aboard on missions to reconnoitre Aden, Djibouti, Zanzibar and Dar es Salaam, once east of Madagascar, the I-30 detached herself from the submarine group and began her special mission. The I-30 was no ordinary Japanese submarine. Her mission, codenamed Sakura or Cherry Blossom by the Japanese, was to travel all the way to German-occupied France and deliver some precious items. 
it would be the very first time that a Japanese naval vessel would travel all the way to German-occupied territory. On the 18th of June, under Commander Shinobu Endo, the I-30 replenished from the Japanese auxiliary cruiser Aikoku Maru, then proceeded to European waters. 300 miles south of Durban in South Africa, the I-30 was spotted and attacked by a South African Air Force patrol aircraft, but escaped undamaged, and on the 2nd of June arrived in the Bay of Biscay. Initially, eight Luftwaffe Junkers Ju-88 bombers, which had been ordered to provide the Japanese with air cover as she continued on the surface to France, met the I-30. Three days later, surface units of the Kriegsmarine, consisting of eight M-class minesweepers and a mine barrage breaker, whose job was to escort the submarine into the French port of Lorient, met the I-30. The Japanese submarine was secured to a floating buoy, and Commander Endo and his crew transferred to a French tender, which took them over to the deck of the U-boat, U-67, also moored in the harbour. Drifting across the harbour was the sound of suitably martial music from the bass band, the dockside line with interested spectators and servicemen. The arrival of the I-30 was an occasion marked with pomp and ceremony by the Kriegsmarine, with none other than the commander of the German Navy, Grand Admiral Erich Raeder, welcoming Endo and his boat into the U-boat base. Also present was the commander of the U-boat arm, Admiral Karl Dernitz, and the Japanese naval attaché to Germany, Captain Yokoi Tadao, who had travelled with his staff from Berlin for the occasion. Endo was decorated with a German medal, probably the Iron Cross second class, and in a further U-boat tradition, a woman presented Endo with a large bouquet of flowers. Ashore, the quayside was lined with U-boat crews, soldiers, military nurses, women from army signals detachments, and French civilians. Berlin had previously requested 1,500 kilograms of mica and 660 kilos of shellac, and Endo delivered both of these in the first underwater Yanagi trade, as it was called, between Germany and Japan. Mica was used in electrical capacitor devices, and shellac was required for military munitions. The I-30 also carried blueprints for the new Japanese Type 91 aerial torpedo. On the 6th of August, a banquet was hosted by the Kriegsmarine for the Japanese in the Grand Hall, part of the old French naval arsenal in Lorient. The base at Lorient was home to the second U-boat flotilla, Salzwedel, under the command of Kapitän Zerze Victor Schützer, holder of the Knight's Cross of the Iron Cross with oak leaves. Following naval tradition, German and Japanese enlisted men exchanged cap bands, and the Japanese crew was permitted access to a submarine to take photographs. To protect the I-30 and allow the Germans to refit her before her long return journey to the Far East, she was to remain inside a Keraman bunker, one of Lorient's 16 supposedly bomb-proof U-boat pens. There, the I-30 was repainted in U-boat grey, more suitable for operations in North Atlantic and European waters. Her engines were overhauled after the long journey, and a quad 20mm Flakfeeling 38 was fitted, replacing the Japanese anti-aircraft armament which consisted of a Type 96 25mm gun. The Germans also fitted a Metox or Biscay Cross radar detector to the boat to assist the boat in successfully renegotiating the dangerous Bay of Biscay. The I-30's Yokosuka E-14Y1 reconnaissance floatplane was repaired and was actually taken on several test flights over Lorient. The later discovery of film by the Allies depicting an aircraft in Japanese Hinamaru or Rising Sun disc markings airborne over France certainly contributed to rumours that the Imperial Japanese Naval Air Service had operated a unit in France. Of course, this was never the case. The Germans did, however, operate Arado AR-196 reconnaissance floatplanes in the Far East, flying them in Japanese markings, but more on this in another video. While their submarine was being refitted in Lorient, Commander Endo and the crew of the I-30 travelled to Berlin, where Endo was decorated again, this time by Hitler himself at the Reich Chancellery. During the return journey to Lorient, the crew of the I-30 stopped in Paris for a sightseeing trip climbing to the top of the Eiffel Tower and shopping on the Champs-Élysées. In return for the mica and shellac, the Germans loaded the I-30 with a mass of naval equipment, a U-boat torpedo fire control system, a kind of early computer, 
and five G7A air torpedoes, a simple torpedo propelled by steam produced by the burning of alcohol in air supplied from a small onboard reservoir, was driven by a single propeller and had a top speed of 44 knots up to a range of four and a half miles. Because the torpedo left a wake of very visible bubbles in the water, this type of torpedo was restricted to use in night attacks. Three G7E or electric torpedoes were also loaded aboard. The G7E was an electrically powered torpedo, which was driven by a small 100 by horsepower electric motor. It was fitted with two contra-rotating propellers, and it left no visible wake in the water. Its maximum speed was 30 knots, with a range of 3.5 miles. Other items included bolder sonar deflector equipment, a new search radar, a METOX, a hydrophone array, 50 Enigma code machines, rocket and glider bombs, anti-tank guns, a Zeiss anti-aircraft fire control system, 200 20mm anti-aircraft guns, a Würzburg air defense ground radar with blueprints and an assortment of other cargo, including 1 million yen in uncut diamonds. The I-30 set sail from Lorient on the 22nd of August. And arrived in Penang on the 8th of October. The chief of the Japanese Ministry of the Navy's Logistics Section, Admiral Hoshina Zenshiro, demanded 10 of the naval Enigma machines. They were duly installed in his headquarters in Singapore, which was reached early on the 13th of October. After a remarkably rapid turnaround in port lasting only six and a half hours, the I-30 sailed again for Japan. However, tragedy befell the boat, the submarine striking a Japanese defensive mine near Singapore. Fourteen of the crew perished when the I-30 sank. Admiral Ogaki summed up the feelings of Imperial headquarters over the loss of the vessel and its precious cargo, commenting, All those aboard were rescued, except about a dozen petty officers and men but the new arms and parts which our navy needed most were lost. Their transportation to our homeland was the main object of her being sent to Europe. After covering more than 80% of the whole trip, she met this disaster in our occupied port. Nothing could be more regrettable. I also felt my responsibility to the high command, and especially to the German authorities for the loss. At least the arms on board her should be salvaged by all means. Later, some of the German naval equipment stored on board the submarine was indeed salvaged by Japanese Navy divers, including most of the 20mm flak guns. Although the I-30 was lost before completing her mission, ironically a casualty of friendly fire, the submarine had successfully transported a valuable cargo from the Far East to France, loaded up with an equally important exchange cargo, and made it back to friendly waters intact. The success of the I-30's mission to German-occupied France demonstrated to both Germany and Japan the possibilities presented by underwater trade voyages. Although submarines were unable to transport the huge cargoes originally delivered by surface merchant ships, the high-quality military merchandise transported to Japan from the Nazis was of enormous value to the Japanese war effort, primarily in the development of their own versions of German weapons. The I-30 would be followed by several other Japanese submarines. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and share, and also help support my channel at PayPal and Patreon. Details in the description box.